This lecture in Climate 401, Geophysical Fluid Dynamics, is a general introduction to dynamic meteorology and what it is. Dynamic meteorology is the study of those motions of the atmosphere that are associated with weather and climate, and meteorologists generally divide the theory-based description of their science into two major divisions, dynamic meteorology and physical meteorology. And again, I said this is the theory-based description. There is the observation-based description of their science, which is often called synoptic meteorology. And of course, depending upon your background and your expertise and your specialty, there can be other ways to look at the field, such as air quality meteorology, fire meteorology, and those are perhaps based on the application of the meteorology. Dynamic meteorology is associated with the fluid dynamics of the atmosphere. And this course will be focused on a certain subset of fluid dynamics. What we study in dynamic meteorology will often be resolved waves. Yes, this is the same sort of idea as a wave on the ocean, but they're waves of many different sorts. And then there are dynamic systems such as hurricanes. And hurricanes often start as waves and then they evolve into a vortex, a closed rotational feature. Dynamic meteorology is not only talking about the nature of those particular waves, but how do they form and how do they dissipate. And when they dissipate, of course, they will have an influence upon the circulation and the flow as well. And that leads us to this idea of the general circulation, which is this idea of what comes out of all of this motion that is the result of really trying to redistribute heat to mix gradients or mix differences in heating that we see in the global energy balance. And of course, these are driven by the sun and the fact that the sun heats the equator more than the poles and that the poles go through strong seasonal changes, which lead to very strong temperature gradients from differential heating. Physical meteorology is associated with thermodynamics, radiative transfer, and cloud physics. There are a set of dynamical features, such as turbulence and viscosity, unresolved wave motions, and these sit at the interface of dynamic and physical meteorology. The way we often think of them in meteorology, the way we often think of them when we try to simulate the weather, try to simulate the climate, is that these dynamical features are cast as physical parameterizations. This leads to an interesting aspect of our field that as we get more computing power or as we look at models that can resolve more and more detail in spatial and temporal scales, some of those things that have traditionally been treated as physical parameterizations become resolved dynamical meteorology. An important thing to think about is that water and the energy associated with phase changes of water strongly link dynamical and physical meteorology. Many courses in dynamics, including this one, will not consider these phase changes of water that strongly in the description of dynamical features. We will recognize that they are there, but we will not be explicitly considering the physics of the phase changes and how they influence the flow. We will only consider them in what we might call bulk ways or again in parameterized ways. Why is dynamic meteorology important? It is a core element of the scientific investigation of the atmosphere, meteorology. It is just one of the essential aspects of the, the study of weather and climate. It's central to weather and weather forecasting because when we think about the prediction of a hurricane, a prediction of a winter storm, or even the prediction of a tornado, we're talking about the propagation of dynamic systems is at the heart of what we're trying to predict. 
It's central to the distribution and the variability of trace constituents such as ozone and pollution from automobiles, air quality, so it's important to chemistry. It's central to the exchange of energy constituents between the atmosphere, the land, and the ocean. We know that for example, carbon dioxide is absorbed into the ocean. It is also released from the ocean. Wind stress and the turbulence and what's going on at the surface is central to that exchange, as, of course, is the temperature. And then, of course, in climate and climate change, there will be an impact on ecosystems and human enterprise, the built environment, and the characteristics of dynamical events and dynamical features will change as the climate has more and more energy and more and more heat in it and also from the feedbacks having more water vapor associated with it. So dynamics is also very important for understanding extreme weather and how that will change and the impact that a change in climate will have on humans and ecosystems in our planet. Weather and climate. What is the difference between weather and climate? Weather is the mix of events that happen each day in our atmosphere, including temperature, rainfall, and humidity. Some people would say weather is what we get. It's what happens. Climate, on the other hand, is often defined as average weather. And in fact, the World Meteorological Organization definition has traditionally been that it's a 30-year average of weather. And some people would say climate is what we expect. Going back to what I said about weather, climate is what we expect, weather is what we get. I like to think of climate as an accumulation, however, more than an average, because what weather is really doing is transporting and helping to take energy from one part of the atmosphere to the other. So it is this idea of the transport and the accumulation of what the weather events do that to me is more of an essence of the role of weather and climate. A question that I often pose, we'll not answer it now, but I will probably give it in virtually any class, is climate average weather, is that a good or complete definition of climate? And that is the end of this introduction to dynamic meteorology.